Last week I uploaded a video looking at the beginning of D-Generation X and it seems a few of you wanted that video to continue on, saying that the video ended too abruptly. The video was only supposed to cover the genesis of DX and not go any further than Survivor Series 97, but viewers wanted to see more D-Generation X and I'm more than happy to keep talking about the subject. Let's waste no time as we continue to look at one of the most groundbreaking and popular factions in WWE history. So let's start the day after Survivor Series 97, which will also give us a chance to talk about other key moments that were only glossed over at the end of the previous DX video. Raw after Survivor Series opened up with DX making their way to the ring, with the now famous DX music playing for the very first time as Sean Hunter, China, and Rick Rude walked into the arena in Ottawa. Naturally, DX got a harsh welcome from the fans in attendance. Sean talked about how he just ran Bret Hart out of the WWF and now his friends in WCW, referring to Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, are going to make life difficult for the hitman down in World Championship Wrestling. Sean also took shots at what he called the dinosaurs of WCW when he said, I ran Bret Hart down south with the rest of those dinosaurs. You see, the Heartbreak Kid is the only man in this business that will ever be on top, that will ever be number one, that will ever be the icon. It's this simple, not Bret Hart, not Hulk Hogan, not Randy Savage, none have the will to be the best. I have something that the rest of you will never have and that is God given, natural, pure talent. Ken Shamrock interrupted Sean's promo, calling the group a disgrace as he challenged Shawn Michaels to a match. Sean tried to get out of this showdown, but Sergeant Slaughter made his way to the ring and announced that Sean would defend his newly won WWF title against Ken Shamrock at the next In Your House pay-per-view. Slaughter also announced that the main event of Raw that night would see Ken Shamrock taking on Triple H. The match, of course, ended due to DX interference. The next night on Raw, Sergeant Slaughter announced that he himself will battle Triple H, also at the next In Your House pay-per-view, appropriately named Degeneration X. This episode of Raw also featured the classic Brett Screwed Brett Vince McMahon promo, and also this was Rick Rude's final appearance in the World Wrestling Federation. The November 24th Raw kicked off with Rick Rude's theme music playing in the arena. Handsome Harvey Whippleman came out. Acting here as Rick Rude, he introduced DX as they made their way to the ring for a promo. Sean looked at Harvey Whippleman and said, Well, Lord knows, that was a tough spot to fill before shoving him to the ground, taking shots at Rick Rude here just one week after he had left. Sean said that since the Montreal match, he has been having trouble sleeping and the events have played over in his mind so much that he needs to get some closure. Sean announced that Bret Hart is in the arena and DX would call him out later in the show. When it was time for the segment and Sean was in the ring, out walked a mini Bret Hart. DX laughed as they reenacted the events of Survivor Series in the middle of the ring. The jabs would keep coming the next week on Raw as Triple H made quick work of Jim Nethart in the main event before spray painting WCW on his back. On to December's In Your House pay-per-view then, D-Generation X. Jim Ross opens up the show saying that the event is sold out with hundreds being turned away at the door, which is simply not true. There are plenty of empty seats during this show, with a number of around 6,300 in attendance. In Your House DX isn't one of my favourite pay-per-views of 1997. I think the novelty of DX's own pay-per-view is what makes it memorable and not necessarily the matches that took place. 
Triple H defeated Sergeant Slaughter in their boot camp match, which was just a no DQ match really, and Shamrock vs Michaels ended in a disqualification when Triple H and China interfered. After the match, Owen Hart made his return to the WWF, beating down Shawn Michaels and setting up the next feud here for D-Generation X. It's a shame that the WWF didn't go the full distance with Owen vs Shawn. There was a natural rivalry here, the storyline wrote itself, but Owen was never given a lengthy feud with Shawn. Instead, Shawn and Owen had a title match on Raw that also ended in a DQ and Owen moved into a feud with Triple H. Before this happened though, Sergeant Slaughter tried to be smart by booking Shawn Michaels vs Triple H on the December 22nd episode of Raw, hoping this would cause tensions within the group. In a match for Shawn's European title, HBK lay down for Hunter, letting Triple H become the new European champion while sticking it to Commissioner Slaughter in the process. Something you should take note of here though is Jim Cornette's excellent commentary work here. He was so good that it needs brought up. When the pinfall happened, listen to what Cornette said here on the headset. It was a ruse, a ploy, a plot, a plan, a charade, a conspiracy, a sham. We've been conned, hoodwinked, bamboozled, flim flam, and the wool pulled over our eyes even. So good. On to 1998 then, and the next big pay per view was the Royal Rumble. Triple H around this time was feuding with Owen Hart, but Triple H was injured, while Sean reignited his feud with The Undertaker, who also had his hands full at the time with Kane. Undertaker vs HBK was booked for the 1998 Royal Rumble, a casket match, and in the lead up, DX would tease that Kane had joined the faction, but this was a lie, intended to provoke The Undertaker. The Royal Rumble in 1998 was an important event in the history of DX. During Sean's casket match with The Undertaker, HBK's back clipped the edge of the casket as he took a back body drop from the ring onto the floor. Sean said he didn't notice any significant damage at first, but the next morning he couldn't get out of bed. Sean was injured badly, but he was still the WWF Champion after the Royal Rumble. Stone Cold Steve Austin had won the Rumble match and Austin vs Michaels had been penciled in for WrestleMania 14. Knowing he had to get the WrestleMania, the decision was made for Shawn Michaels to not work another match until his encounter with Austin. Shawn was originally scheduled to be in the tag main event at No Way Out of Texas in February, but Savio Vega took his place. Triple H was also injured around this time and he wouldn't be ring ready until February of 1998, however he did indeed make it the No Way Out of Texas. Mike Tyson was brought into the World Wrestling Federation to act as the special enforcer for the WrestleMania 14 title match, and along the way, Tyson joined DX. At WrestleMania 14, Shawn Michaels dropped the title to Steve Austin in a decent match, by no means was it a WrestleMania classic, but given the pain that Shawn Michaels was in during this encounter, it's more than possible. In the end, Mike Tyson turned on DX and counted the 1-2-3, albeit his count was super fast. It's been reported that everyone was on eggshells around HBK during this time, worried that he might just give up and forfeit the title before getting to WrestleMania, and it's also been reported that The Undertaker was standing at the curtain during WrestleMania 14 to ensure Shawn did indeed drop the title to Austin. This is one of these stories that's been reported for years, and Shawn Michaels said himself recently that there was absolutely no truth to this story. I'll put a link in the video description for you to check out, courtesy of the Inside the Ropes YouTube channel. In this video, Sean said that he didn't even see The Undertaker that day. Sean retired here after WrestleMania and it was up to Triple H to lead a new D-Generation X. The following night on Raw, Triple H made his way to the ring and said, You dropped the ball, but don't worry HBK, because Triple H picked it up. Now the ball is in my court, I'll take care of the worries, I'll take care of the problems, and I'll make the decisions. This is the genesis of D-Generation X. Tonight, in front of the world, I form the DX army. An army that will take care of business that should have been taken care of from the very start. 
And when you start an army, when you set out to do what no one else can do, the first thing you do is you look to your blood, you look to your buddies, you look to your friends, you look to the clique. Sean Waltman then made his way to the ring, fresh from WCW. Sean then took the mic and said, I heard Hulk Hogan on television saying I couldn't cut the mustard. Well, Hulk Hogan, you suck, pal. I don't think you have any kind of room to talk about anybody cutting the mustard. And also, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall would be standing right here with us if they weren't being held hostage by WCW. Sean Waltman was renamed Axe Pock and he was now the newest member of DX. Later that night, Triple H also recruited the New Age Outlaws, Jesse James and Billy Gunn, as another two new members of DX. The DX Army was now officially formed. There are plenty of fans out there who prefer this iteration of DX and it's easy to see why. They soon became fan favourites in the World Wrestling Federation due to their antics and promos. The intent was to keep DX as bad guys, but this was during the era of bad guys being cool and the fans couldn't help but cheer for Triple H's DX army. DX's invasion of WCW is one of those events in wrestling that will live on forever. On April 27, 1998, Raw and Nitro were both held in Virginia, with the arenas just 20 miles apart from each other. DX took advantage of this by visiting the Norfolk Scope Arena, home of WCW Nitro that evening. Throughout the Raw presentation, we were shown footage of DX outside the Nitro Arena, talking to WCW attendees as they swore allegiance to DX and said that Eric Bischoff and WCW sucks. DX tried to get in the front doors of the arena while shouting that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were being held against their will, with Triple H hilariously shouting, POWCW, let my people go. DX then brought their jeep to the back of the Norfolk Scope in an attempt to drive into the arena, but the shutters were closed and DX was not able to drive straight into WCW Nitro. Eric Bischoff has said, in hindsight, one of his biggest regrets was not allowing DX to come into the arena that evening, as everyone would have tuned into WCW Nitro to see D-Generation X on the show. Kevin Nash has shared the same sentiments, saying that WCW had a golden opportunity here that they didn't take advantage of. The segments were so good that two weeks later, DX also tried to get into WCW headquarters at the CNN Center. During the time of the DX WCW invasion, for some reason, the WWF was still trying to portray the group as heels. DX mainly feuded with the DOA and LOD 2000 in these initial weeks, but the crowd was getting very much behind Triple H's faction. After the WCW segments, the fans fully supported DX, and they became one of the most popular and entertaining groups in the history of the WWE. D-Generation X of this era had their greatest feud with the nation, further cementing them as fan favourites as leaders Triple H and The Rock began their rivalry over the Intercontinental Championship. During Triple H's feud with The Rock, DX dressed up as the nation during a promo. It was a good promo, it got the right reaction, but years later, X-Pac has called this one of his biggest regrets in wrestling, for obvious reasons. The segment though is well remembered and it wouldn't be a DX video without bringing this up. Triple H ended up defeating The Rock at SummerSlam 98 for the Intercontinental title in an excellent ladder match. The best match of this night in my opinion. Check this one out for sure. Shawn Michaels came back to the WWF as commissioner and he initially sided with Vince McMahon and the corporation in taking down DX. It seemed that the Generation X had taken Shawn into the group after the corporation turned their back on HBK, but in the end, Shawn Michaels was nowhere near ready for a proper TV return. He had developed further personal issues that needed addressed and he was sent home by the WWE. 
As time went on, Triple H wanted more than just the Intercontinental title. He wanted to be the biggest heel in the company, something that, in real life, his fellow DX members were not ready for. Road Dog, Billy and Axe Pac felt that DX still had plenty to give, they were on a roll, merch sales were off the charts and they were in a good main position in the company, but Triple H felt his natural calling in wrestling was to be a heel. He wanted to go on his own and leave D-Generation X. The wheels were put in motion in January of 1999 when China turned on Triple H and joined the corporation. At WrestleMania 15 that year, China turned on her fellow corporate member Kane, helping Triple H defeat him in their scheduled match that night. We thought that China had rejoined Hunter in DX, but during x pacs match with Shane McMahon that evening, Hunter turned on x pac delivering a pedigree and siding with the corporation along with China. So Kane was out of the corporation and Triple H and China were in. x pac and Kane then formed a tag team even capturing the tag titles twice during their time together. The group began falling apart in the weeks that followed, with Billy Gunn getting frustrated with Kane's presence within the faction. This led to Billy leaving and eventually he teamed with China to take on Road Dogg and x -Pac over the rights to use the DX name. The tag match happened at Fully Loaded 99, with Road Dogg and x -Pac scoring the win. It was all for nothing though, as later in the year, every member of the group reunited, this time as full blown heels. Triple H secured the WWF Championship at the beginning of 2000, and DX's primary mission was to protect Hunter from the likes of Steve Austin and The Rock. Down the road, DX was absorbed into the Helmsley McMahon faction, and by the end of 2000, Triple H pretty much became the WWF's biggest heel and a huge solo star. Other members of DX ended up feuding with each other and the team was pretty much now completely done with. They did reunite on the November 6th 2000 episode of Raw is War to take on the Radicals, with the exception of Axe Pac who was out with an injury, but this was Triple H's last involvement with the group until reforming with Shawn Michaels in 2006. Down the line, we'll take a look at the 2006 DX reunion and the return of Shawn Michaels, but for now, this will end our look at DX during the late 90s. Hopefully this video expanded well with the previous DX upload and you now have a good understanding of the group's time together.